my inheritance, my prize, my food, my dream, my highest joy. Thank you for the precious gift of your Holy Spirit and for the gift of tongues. We thank you for the value of that gift and we ask, Lord, that as, um, as we just look at some insight into this gift and into the power of your precious Holy Spirit, that our hearts would be enlarged today and that our faith would be built up to receive everything that you have for us. And so we ask, Lord, that you would give an impartation of understanding, an impartation of wisdom, and that you would bring miraculous release and even advancement and increase, even those who already speak in tongues, that they would get more today, that, that the copiousness and the bounty of your goodness would be poured out upon your children. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, whoa. How many of you have never spoken in tongues yet? How many of you? Raise your hand. All right. I love you. And uh, how, many of you, how many of you think that you're a hard nut to crack on this area? You think that you're, you're one of those toughies? <laughs> well, I love working with the toughies. I love it, you know? So we love cracking nuts. And so anyway, um, I know that we don't have much time. And, you know, I could spend just days talking on this subject. It's so fascinating to me and so wonderful. But... Um, we better get started. So um, turn with me, please, to um, Acts, chapter, um, Acts chapter 1, and starting in verse 4. Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 4. And gathering them together, Jesus commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Verse 14. These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. And then turned to John um, the Gospel of John and chapter uh, 3 <clears throat> and verse uh, 6. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus here. And he's saying, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And then turn to, um, I think it's Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1. And starting in verse 2, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellency or by his own virtue. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. All right, we're going to talk about the precious Holy Spirit and his gifts. We'll look at another couple of scriptures in a few moments. Jesus gave a promise to his disciples. He said, the Father is going to give you a gift, and his name is the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he's going to lead you, he's going to guide you into all truth, he's going, to, he's going to teach you how to exalt me and glorify me, and he's going to empower you, and he's going to come by your side, and he is going to give you a power to be a bold witness for me. And when he was explaining to, to, to Nicodemus how to be born again, he says, Nicodemus, you need to understand the spiritual concept because you have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. And when you're born a natural birth, you're born of the flesh. 
But when you're born again into the kingdom, you're born of the Spirit, and it is your spirit man that is born again, and it's born by the Spirit of God. Now, I want you to listen to this very carefully. When you receive the Lord into your heart, when you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is your Savior, your personal Savior, then His, His blood seals you into covenant with God. And you become a child of God. You become the Lord's very own. And when you invite Jesus, when you invite the Spirit of the Lord, the Lord to come into your heart, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, comes and resides within your spirit. And that is what makes you born again. Your spirit becomes born again. And the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, I think it is, it says that you become a brand new creation. Old things have passed away and all things become new. When that happens, it is an absolute miracle. And that means that inside your spirit, remember your spirit, you have a soul and you live in a body, that inside your spirit you have brand new life. And the kingdom of God then dwells within you. Kingdom life is on the inside of you. And inherent in that kingdom life is everything that pertains to life and to godliness. You are a child of God. You are in Christ. So when you stand before the Father, He sees Christ. And in the earthly dimension, Christ is in you. The power of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. And you've been given everything that pertains to life and to godliness. Everything is inherent in the power of the Lord that comes into your born-again spirit. You already have it all. It's in your spirit. And that's why when Gauri was speaking today about walking in the spirit, and if we walk in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But we'll start to, to walk out those things that are in us. The scripture says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You can't work out anything that's not already in. So you already have everything. Inherent in the Holy Spirit. If we look at um, 1 Corinthians 12, tur turn there. If you look at 1 Corinthians 12, we see the Apostle Paul is writing an apostolic letter to the church at Corinth to bring things in that church into divine order. And he begins to talk about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's operations and the Holy Spirit's manifestations, the Holy Spirit's anointings and the diversity of them as they will be manifested and expressed in the local church gathering, in the gathering of the saints together. And so Paul is explaining this. And he says in verse 4, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of ministries, and the same Lord, and there are varieties of effects, but the same God, who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Everyone say manifestation. To manifest just means to show forth. That's all it means. In other words, if I have this piece of paper behind me, and you didn't see me put it there, um, it, is, it, is, it is a concealed thing right now. But when I bring it forward for you to see it, then it's manifested. I had it all the time. It's been with me all the time. But you never saw it because it wasn't manifested yet. It wasn't brought forth. So he said, the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good he has given to each one. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the performing of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the discerning of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually or separately as he will. He lists nine particular manifestations that can be brought forth by the Holy Spirit's unction in a believer's meeting. And a lot of times we get very confused with that and we think, well, that means that only one person here, one person there, whoever God chooses can have certain gifts, but the, the rest of us don't have them. And that is not what he is saying. He's just saying that in a believer's meeting, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to manifest his power and his gifts through his people. And he said, so when you gather together to glorify God, the Holy Spirit is with you in that setting. 
he's with you and he's going to begin to bring about certain inspirations within the meeting for the common good, for the corporate anointing so that the whole body can be edified. So um, Joanne might have a word of prophecy. Gowry might have a message in tongues. Marilyn might have the interpretation. Jeannie might have a word of knowledge. We could go on and in a believer's meeting, we can operate all the gifts as the Holy Spirit inspires people to move in them and as they respond by faith. But it's all the same Spirit. It's all the same Spirit. It's all the same God that dwells within you. It's all gifts of the kingdom that dwell within each and every one of us. The next time we come together, it might be a totally different thing. Totally different people will be operating the gifts as the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. But the thing is, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you have God in you, if you have a born-again spirit, if you have the kingdom of God within you, then you have it all. You have everything that pertains to life and to godliness. And when you get a hold of that, ladies, you will live your life differently. When you begin to realize that it is Christ, the hope of glory that dwells within you, the anointed one and his anointing that is within you, and that you have already been given everything, every gift, everything that pertains to life and godliness, you will live a different life. And you know how it's all released? You know how this inside life gets released outside? It's not by going to, to 10 years of Bible school. It's not by having a degree. It's not by, by, by a bunch of works. It's by faith. It's by faith. I've seen people, brand new Christians, you know, Todd Bentley, he blesses my heart. 24 years old, out all over the world, preaching in crusades, leading people to Christ all over the place, play, praying for the sick, miracles, signs, and wonders following. Is he just a special person? Well, yes, he is. But he has a precious faith. It's not because he's a precious person or a special person that he's able to operate those gifts. All of you are special. All of you are precious. And you can all operate those gifts by faith as we step out. That's all he's done. He takes risks. That's how faith is spelled. R-I-S-K. <laughs> Many of you have heard about Maryland's and my first trip up to the the North Country years ago, believe me, it was a step of faith. We were, we were, we didn't have a clue what we were doing, but we just believed God, and God showed up. And we still don't have a clue what we're doing. But we just go by faith. And that's how all the character, the quality, the nature, the essence of God that's already been given to us, His gift, it just gets worked out by faith. So tongues is one of those gifts, and when you have God in you, you have that gift. Now, the Lord doesn't just want us to have an insider spirit. He wants us to be what is called baptized. And that word in the Greek is a total immersion. It's not a little dabble, do you? It's not a little sprinkle of the Holy Spirit. It means to be completely immersed or totally filled. And the example that is given to us in the Scripture and in history is found in Acts chapter 2. When they were gathered together waiting for that promise to come, and I tell you, it was not a little dabble, do ya? It was this, this rushing mighty wind sound, and all of a sudden flames showed up and started just resting on people's heads. And it says, and they were all filled. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, they, were, they were filled to overflowing. The disciples on the road to Emmaus had actually already received Christ. Jesus breathed upon them, but that day they were just immersed. Their spirits had already been awakened, but that day the corporate body was immersed in the Holy Spirit's power. They were all filled. And you know what they all did? They all, everyone say all. all. They all spoke in tongues. You know what that means? That means the tongue-talking Christians are the normal ones. <laughs> On the day that the church was birthed, they were all tongue-talkers. When I got born again, I got born again um, in an Anglican setting, in an Anglican church, so I owe, owe a lot to the Anglicans. And, and I didn't know that this tongue thing was a big controversy. I didn't understand that, of course. They should have probably locked me up for the first few months of being a Christian. 
just hopping around. I got, I got filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues on the third day after I received Christ. And there's a number of people in this Anglican church, they were so fired up for God, and they've been filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in tongues, but they weren't supposed to, I didn't know that we weren't supposed to be too loud about that. <laughs> they told me too late. <laughs> but there was this funny thing that happened, there was two services. There was a normal, they called it the normal service in the morning, and then what they called a charismatic service at night. Now, when I read Acts chapter 2 and realized that the normal was a little bit different than what the church called normal, I thought, there's something wrong with this picture. And we were embarrassed, or not, not really embarrassed, I wasn't embarrassed, but it was like, we were kind of, we had to be so careful, we had to tiptoe around the whole thing, because after all, we didn't want to be offensive, because we were the weirdo ones, when really, we were the normal ones. <laughs> God wants us all to speak in tongues. Paul said, I wish that you would all speak in tongues. And a lot of people interpret that to think that, that well, you know, all can't. Everybody can speak in tongues. He said, I wish you just would. <laughs> just take a step of faith and do it. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Follow my example. You know why he spoke in tongues more? More than all the people that day? It's because he knew the value of it. And it's a precious gift, an absolutely precious gift for the people of God. Now, what's it for then? Turn to 1 Corinthians 14, verse, verse 1. Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts. Listen, we are commanded in Scripture to passionately desire the operation of spiritual gifts in our lives. We're to pursue love more than anything. We talked about that this morning. He said, pursue love, but desire with passion. In fact, one of the... Um, one of the uh, uh, words, I think it's in the King James, is covet. And that word actually means lust after. Take for yourself. Paul's saying, pursue love, but take for yourself with passionate desire the spiritual gifts. Come on, we need these spiritual gifts. We need the supernatural manifestation of God. We are moving into an apostolic season in the body of Christ. It's like what Marilyn was talking about, where it's not going to be about just mundane, you know, confined churchianity and institutional stuff. It's about the kingdom of God. And when the early apostles went out, they went out in the power of the Spirit. Paul said, I'm not coming to you speaking with mere, mere words of man's wisdom. I'm coming to you in the demonstration of power. We need spiritual gifts. Acts 4, verse 33. Great grace was upon them, and they demonstrated great power. We need that. And tongues is for that, by the way. It says that we are to desire earnestly spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. Now, does that mean we don't desire the others? You don't desire healing just because we're told, especially prophet, prophecy? No, desire all of them. All of them with great passion, but you go over the top desiring the prophetic to be operating in your life. And if you push forward in faith to lay hold of these things, you will grow, you will develop, you will, you will be released in these gifts beyond anything that you could ever imagine. For one who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands. In other words, when you are speaking in your tongues, if you are truly speaking in tongues, you yourself, the one who's talking in tongues, will not understand. You will not understand what you are saying unless you receive the gift of the interpretation of tongues, the operation of that. You step out on faith to receive the operation of that, which will be an interpretation, not a translation. Actually, I just had an experience the other night that was so fascinating. Just a few nights ago, I was prophesying over a home group of people and um, I got to one guy and I, I, I just felt led to speak in tongues first. 
and then bring the prophetic word over him. Afterwards, he came up. He says, I speak Aramaic. That's my, that's my um, natural tongue. And he says, when you were speaking in tongues, you were speaking Aramaic. And he had it all written down there. And he said, this is what you were saying. You are saying, praise be to the glory of my Father. Isn't that awesome? I love it. So it says, you won't understand what you're saying, but you're speaking, of, speaking to God. And it says, in his spirit, in your spirit, by speaking in tongues, you are proclaiming the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Things that have not yet been revealed in the earth yet. Do you know that the ways of God are past finding out? Don't think that we've seen it all yet. We haven't seen anything yet. 2,000 years, 6,000 years, can that hold and contain all the knowledge of God? I doubt it. His ways are past finding out. It will take all eternity to know the fullness of God. But he says, when you speak in tongues, what you're doing is you're proclaiming the mysteries of God. You're proclaiming what you don't even know about Him so that that understanding and that revelation of God can be released out into the spiritual realm in the, in the earthly domain so that more of Him can be opened up. You know, oh, I believe that when we pray in tongues, we are preparing the next move of God that we don't even know about. In fact... God said if he were to tell us what he's about to do, we wouldn't even believe it. We would be in unbelief. And we can't stay in unbelief because anything that God does has to be released by faith. So he has his plan. The all-wise God has his plan. He says, I know what I'll do. I'll just put this gift inside of them. Because if I'm going to tell their natural mind what I'm about to do, they wouldn't pray for it because they won't even believe it. So what I'm going to do is give them a gift of tongues that they don't even understand and they'll be releasing that in faith and all the mysteries of what I'm about to do will be released and then that's my landing strip. <laughs> Woo! And it says, one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation, but one who speaks in a tongue edifies him tr his himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church. Now, I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you would prophesy. And greater is one who prophesies than one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the church may receive edifying. Now, that doesn't mean that we aren't supposed to receive tongues. We need tongues. Why? To edify ourselves so that we can edify the church. You can't take anyone any higher than you are yourself. If you're on this level, you're not going to take any... You have no inspiration beyond that level. He says, pray in tongues, you'll edify yourself. You'll build yourself up in your most holy faith, Jude 20 says. That's Christ's faith, the miracle-working faith. Build yourself up. Build yourself up in tongues. Because when you build yourself up in tongues, then you can edify the body. And the edification of the body through the prophetic has a greater ability to build up the corporate body than tongues does. Because tongues will only build up you as a person. But if you're built up as a person, then you can edify the corporate body with the prophetic. Amen. Which we're going to unleash here this weekend. <laughs> at some time. Shanamashika. <laughs> <sighs> That's a couple good reasons to speak in tongues. Isn't it? Just a couple. We don't even have to go much further than that. But if you want a little bit more, <laughs> turn to Romans 8. Hila Tamashika. Whoa. 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 Okay, I have to do this. Oh, I wish I had a few hours with you right now on this. Okay, okay, verse 14. It says, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now that word sons in the Greek is the word huios. And it means the mature sons that are able to receive the inheritance. 
They're the bar mitzvah sons, the sons that are of the age, of the mature level, to receive inheritance. Now, just to throw this in for free, Acts 2 8 says, Ask of me, and I will give to thee the heathen, the nations, for thine. It's our hour. You have not received the spirit of bondage leading to fear again, but you've received the spirit of adoption. As sons, as, as mature sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. Now, that word, spirit of adoption, that doesn't mean that we are adopted into the kingdom. You are not adopted into the kingdom. You are born into the kingdom. You are not an adopted child. You, you are born into the family. Jesus said this, he said, unless you're born, unless you're born, everyone say born. born. Unless you're born of the Spirit, you cannot be a member of the kingdom. You have to be born of the Spirit. That which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that does that work. So we're born, we're not adopted. You are not adopted into the kingdom. Do you know what that, that word there, adoption, actually means in the Greek? It's Huios thesis. It means the Spirit of God that adopts you into the image of Jesus Christ and brings you to the place of mature sonship. It's adopting you into mature sonship, bringing you in. It's like um, when you adopt into the image of something or you adopt minutes, you accept you accept the minutes of the board of directors meeting. You adopt them as part of of the, of the whole thing. You're brought into the image of something. And what he's saying here is that when we're led by the Spirit, we will be the, the mature sons of God and that the Spirit of who he sees is the Spirit of God is bringing us into that maturity so that we can receive the nations. And we don't have to do too much because it says he's doing it. And it's producing this maturity level on the inside. When you rest in him and just allow him to do it, he'll do it in you. And you'll mature forward into that place. And it says, and, and that's the spirit by which you cry, Abba, Father. Knowing him, so at one with him, his passion, his heart, oneness. Not just afar off, but as a mature son receiving inheritance. Okay, I just had to share that. Um, okay. Um, Hanama Shika. Verse 18, Hanama Hana Tia Tia Kosha. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed for, to us. For the anxious longing of the creation awaits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. The trees out there are waiting for the hour that the church arises into its maturity. All of creation, the rocks are just waiting. The dirt is waiting. Everything is waiting for us to come into our maturity in Christ. That the creation itself will also be set free from its slavery, verse 21, into corruption, into the freedom of the glory of the children of God or the mature sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the, the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but we ourselves... We ourselves, having the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan, groan within ourselves, awaiting eagerly for our adoption or our maturing into the sonship, into that mature level of sonship. We are groaning on the inside. There's a groan on the inside of us that says, Oh, I want to mature in you. I want to see you more, Lord. I want to know you more. I want to know your mind, your heart. I want to be so close to you. I want to be part, an integral part of what you're doing in the earth. We groan toward that for the revealing of Christ through his church. So we have this going on. Verse 26. And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. Are you feeling weak? The Spirit helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. Now that word groaning in the Greek means, means um, sounds that, that are not of articulate speech. And it literally means to groan. Have you ever groaned in the Spirit? Uh, 
a voice of the Spirit, an utterance of the Spirit that intercedes for us against our weaknesses to bring us into mature sonship. Now, many theologians believe that also, as well as just the groanings of the Spirit, that, that tongues is a part of the expression of that groaning. And so when you pray in tongues, in a mashika, a mashika, the the Holy Spirit is is making utterance, is making intercession on your behalf to to bring you into that 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 mature sonship, removing the childish ways, removing the weaknesses on the inside of you, taking up together with you against your weaknesses. That's a good reason to pray in tongues. That in itself is a good reason to pray in tongues. But it's not only for us because it says, it says, and he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so even when you don't know how to pray for a person, another believer, as you are, when you enter into the groanings of the Spirit or praying in tongues, he will make intercession that is perfect prayer for those that you are yielding before him and bringing before him. It's amazing. Now, I'm just going to stop there. There's a whole bunch of other benefits to speaking in tongues, but I think that's enough. (laughs) You can start on that, and then you can learn more. He'll teach you the other things. You can get depression lifted off of you, for instance, by praying in tongues. You can can express worship that will lift you up into the third heaven by praying in tongues. There's lots of benefits for speaking in tongues. Lots of them. Wonderful. You can, you can prophesy to the church by releasing tongues with an interpretation. Hanamashanda. <laughs> you can be a sign and a wonder for the unsaved by speaking in tongues. It's a sign that will follow those who believe. Whew. Okay. So, how do we receive it? Saved? Now, when I got born again, I received a very, very dramatic salvation experience. I had a very dramatic salvation experience. I cried, I wept, I, 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 I just, I felt the Lord in my life. I felt my sins being taken out. I felt the new life coming in. I cried all night. A very dramatic salvation experience. Some of you had a dramatic salvation experience. Others of you did not. But whether you had a dramatic experience or not, makes no difference to the validity of that experience. What made the experience valid was your faith. Had nothing to do with experience. Now, when I received tongues, I received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I didn't feel a thing. Not a thing. I read Dennis Bennett's book, The Holy Spirit in You. And in there, there's some good teaching on it, and a little prayer was in the back of the book that you could pray if you wanted to receive the Holy Spirit and be released in tongues. So I just prayed the prayer. I prayed the prayer. I felt nothing. Nothing. I didn't feel no lightning bolts. I didn't even have goosebumps or turkey skin or whatever you want to call it. I didn't have any of that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I felt kind of dull on the inside. But I thought, well, I read the book and I did everything that it said to do. I did everything the scripture told me to do, so I guess I must have it. And then it said, step out in faith and begin to just speak in a new language. And so I did. I went, empty key. And I thought, I'm making this up. I know I am. I've got a good imagination. I'm just making this up, empty key, empty key. I thought, well, that's not tongues, and I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. My lips aren't swelling. My tongue isn't shaking. <laughs> My voice isn't quivering. I feel nothing. I'm just making it up. But I read a scripture that morning, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so I just received it by faith. I thought, well, faith is what pleases God. So if faith is what pleases God, I'm doing this in faith. And so if he's pleased, that's all that matters anyways. And to key, and to key, and to key. I couldn't even get beyond the antiki stuff. So an antiki. (laughs) N-tiki. I practiced. Never felt a thing. I talked to my pastor the next day. I said, I got it. 
I got the tongues. He says, oh, that's wonderful. Let me hear. I thought, oh. <laughs> and to key, and to key. He said, oh, yeah, okay. But I didn't let his skepticism ruin my walk of faith. I had to fight all the time the little thoughts in the mind that just says, you're just making this up. This is baby talk. You're making it full. No, I'm pleasing God. And tiki, and tiki, and tiki, and tiki. I think it was over like a month or so. I can't remember how long. It seemed like forever, but that's all I had. But I read a scripture that says, if you're faithful in the little, then God will give you much. So if I'm going to be faithful, it's only a little, but I'm going to just be faithful with this, and maybe one day I'll get an explosion. And that's exactly what happened. I was riding in my car one day. I used to do my antique thing everywhere. I was in my car one day, antique, 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 I did it backwards, upside down, inside out. Sing it, talk it, shout it. One day I'm doing this in my car, and all of a sudden, and it just, woo! And I still hear myself every once in a while saying antiki. I gotta ask the Lord when I get up there what I was actually saying. <laughs> Woohoo! How? You know what? This is, I just gotta share this story because it's so great. I was over in Europe last year, right? And we're on this tour. The moment I arrived in Amsterdam, I was in the airport, and all of a sudden I go, Hiya! Chaya! And, uh, and I never had that tongue before. I never used those words before. And all throughout Europe, we went through Holland, Belgium, Germany. I'm going, Hiya! Chaya! But every time I'd say this, incredible power would be released. I thought, man, I wonder what I'm saying. People would go, Ooh, you know. So, that's quite the word, whatever it means. <laughs> so after I finished that, 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 that session, we're back in um, mission, actually, doing a little prayer seminar. And all of a sudden, right in the middle of the teaching, go, hey ya chay ya <laughs> And then I had to explain what was going on. And one of the girls in the seminar said, you know, I think, I think that's a Hebrew word. And um, I said, do you think it is? Can you find out for me? She says, yes, I know some friends that... that um, that study Hebrew, I'm going to ask them. So she went to them and came back. She said, yes, it is. It is. It's actually Chaya. But written in the phonetic spelling, it's C-H-A-Y-A-H, which would, if you were to pr pronounce it in English, would be Chaya. I think both of them, Chaya and Chaya. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to be sure. You know what it means? She said, it means the God kind of life. I thought, I proclaim that all over Europe. <laughs> Hiya, chaya, right in the airport. I wonder if there's going to be revival in the Amsterdam airport. <laughs> so anyways, then about a month later, I'm doing this study and I have my computer out. I'm doing a study to get ready for actually a women's conference, and I wanted to, um, I wanted to speak on revival. So I thought, I'm going to get my, my um, online Bible and check this out. So I punched in the word revival, and when it came up on the screen, you know what the Hebrew was? C-H-A-Y-A-H, Chaya, Chaya. And you know what it meant? Revival, life of God. <laughs> Antiki, Antiki. <laughs> There's an evangelist that came and shared, um, shared with us in, um, in uh, mission one, one time. And he has a miracle signs and wonders ministry. He's raised the dead. Uh, people have been healed from cancerous tumors, all kinds of stuff. Um, a power ministry. He operates in the power gifts of the Spirit. Very dynamic man of God. And he was sharing his testimony about how he received tongues. And it was very similar to mine. He said he was in a prayer line up and they came by and said, Receive tongues, speak in tongues. So he goes, um, Maka, Maka. And the evangelist said, That's it, you got it, you got it. And so he thought, oh, well, I don't think I got it. I think I just made that up. I think I just made it up. But it was what he had. So he thought, well, I'll just be faithful with this word. I'll just believe that it is because it's supposed to be by faith. So he goes, Maka, 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 Maka. Ma-ka. Ma-ka. 
Maka, 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 for one a year. That's all he had. One word. So I just have to be faithful. Maka, 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 maka. And after about a year, he's sitting in a meeting. And they're having a prayer time. And he's going, maka, maka, maka. And this woman, so he, she said, excuse me, sir, what are you saying? And he says, oh. He says, that's my tongue. <laughs> I have one word. I've had it for a year. <laughs> I'm practicing faithfulness. <laughs> she says, well, what was it? I just want you to repeat that word. He says, it's makar. I thought that's what you said. And she said, in my language, whatever that was, she says, in my language, that word means power. <laughs> it means divine power. For one whole year, he was saying, power, 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 for one whole year. And what the most amazing thing was is right after that year of proclaiming the power of God in the heavenlies for one year, he comes into his power ministry. And got a whole new language, not just one, but many. Faithfulness. But the thing is, we have to step out in faith. It's all about faith. You see, you have to believe that it's already in you. If you've got the Holy Spirit in you, then you have tongues. But it's just hanging out down there. (laughs) I'm the gift of tongues. Haven't been opened yet. <laughs> just hanging out. Just waiting for my opportunity. <laughs> it's in there. It's not a problem of whether you have it or not. It's you got to get it out. Wake it up. Take that step of faith and let it trickle. It might be only a drop at first. Or a trickle, but it can move into a stream in a rushing river. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This may he of the Spirit. <laughs> How? <laughs> Hariya Namashika. <laughs> Woo! We were over in Europe just a few weeks ago. In fact, I was with Gallery. I got another new, new word, one of these new words. And what, what was it again? It was, um, oh. What was that word? I kept hearing myself saying it over and over again. Anyways, we found out it was a Hebrew word for praise. And I was saying it over and over and over again everywhere we went. What, what was it? Forget what it was now. But all the time that we were in England, it just kept coming out over and over again. And it was talking about the praise of God. Yada, yada. Yada, yada. <laughs> but you just got to let it out. It might sound silly to you. And you know, if you look at Acts chapter 2, it says, they spoke. Who spoke? They spoke. They spoke. But the Spirit gave them the utterance. The Holy Spirit is not going to do your talking for you. He's given you the gift. Supper will be fine. (laughs) There's There's probably some people already over there eating, which would be wonderful. Then we don't have to stand in as long a lineup. (laughs) Hanamashika <laughs> Where was I? Where was, no Ab- After praise where, where, where? Oh yeah, you do the utterance you, you do the speaking You bring forth, it's you The Holy Ghost, he's not going to all of a sudden <laughs> He'll give you the inspiration, but you have to do the speaking. You're God's mouthpiece. I've seen people wait there. Uh. <laughs> Say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to talk. Thought you're gonna wait with your mouth open for a long time. <laughs> and you know, there's two ingredients to speech. You have to use your voice, right? And you have to move your lips and tongue. If you don't, you're not gonna get any kind of language out. Nothing. When I speak in English, you see, I have to use those components to get the words out. If I came in here and didn't use my voice, but only moved my mouth, it would look like this. 
And you see, unless you could read lips, you wouldn't understand what I was saying, and you would walk out, and I would never have an opportunity to speak again. <laughs> or if I came in here and didn't use the movement of my mouth, my tongue, and only my voice, it would sound something like this. <laughs> And if I did that, you would lock me up and take me somewhere. <laughs> when, I speak in, when I speak in the language of my understanding, my brain tells my voice box and it tells my mouth what to do. And I begin to speak in the language of my noggin, the, the language of my understanding, of my intellect. But when I speak in tongues, it's not my intellect that understands what I'm saying, but the inspiration comes from the Holy Spirit. But I still have to do the talking. That means I have to open my mouth. It means I have to move my mouth. It means I have to move my tongue. And it means I have to put a voice to what I'm saying. Open up your mouth. He'll feel it. Just begin to talk. Simple. So that's it. The so simple as that. Open your mouth. Begin to talk. Walk by faith. Now, why do some people have a hard time receiving? I'll tell you one of the biggest obstacles we see. Some people have been doctrinated wrong, indoctrinated wrongly. They have been told that tongues is not for today. It died with the apostles. When the apostles died, tongues ceased all over the world. John was the last apostle to die. John is there dying. Takes his last breath and all of a sudden, that's it. Anyone that was speaking in tongues wasn't anymore. Cut off. No! That's wrong. Tongues has not ceased. It's for the church age. We need it. We need tongues in operation. Some people have been taught that tongues is of the devil. If you speak in tongues, you're of the devil. And so nobody wants that. And if those doctrines are in the back of your mind, they put fear in you, and so there's not the inspiration of faith. And if you don't have faith, you're not going to receive anything from the Lord. <coughs> only, by faith do, only by faith do we receive. And some people are frightened because they think, well, what if I speak in tongues and I'm speaking something profane? That will never happen. Do you think God is going to give you something demonic? He would never do that to you. You can have an absolute <laughs> assurance that he will only give you what is holy. He would never give you anything evil. Never. He's just not like that. He is not. You never have to fear that as a believer. People are afraid of getting a, a counterfeit tongue. <coughs> are there counterfeit tongues? Yes. The devil counterfeits everything. He counterfeits prayer. He counterfeits worship. He counterfeits everything. Is there counterfeit tongues? Yes. How do you get them? Join the local coven. <laughs> Ask a demon for a tongue, and you will find out what the counterfeit is. But we are not of that spirit. We don't go asking no demons for tongues. We don't go join local covens of witches. We don't join false religions. We don't join Satanist groups. We don't do that. We're Christians. We've given our heart to Him. We're sanctified, set apart for His glory, for His use. We got the real thing. We've got the absolute real thing. You can all speak in tongues. I'm just going to go through one... Um, one reason why people stumble a little bit is because they get hung up on a scripture. 1 Corinthians 12. God has appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and miracles and gifts of healing, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? And the inference is no. All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts. Earnestly desire the greater gifts. What is the greatest gift for the edification of the church? It says the prophetic gift. So if you're in a church meeting and you want to see everyone edified, that's the one that you're going to covet. Covet earnestly the greater gifts. 
What's the greatest gift for edifying yourself as a believer? Tongues. Just because not everyone does move in apostolic anointing or miracle working anointing or speak in tongues or bring interpretations doesn't mean you can't. It just means they haven't done it. And we could say the same thing of the church today. Are, are all moving apostolically? No. Are all working miracles? No. Are all speaking in tongues? No. But desire the greatest gift for the moment. If I am dying of cancer, I don't need the interpretation of tongues. That is not going to be the greatest gift for me at that time. What is going to be the greatest gift? Healing. Desire the greatest gift. What's the greatest gift for edifying yourself? Tongues. So we have to move some of these confusion things out of the way. We have to renounce some of these, these fears, renounce some of these hindrances that come from, from wrong interpretations of theology and doctrine. God is a good God. Sometimes people have not cult, cut occultic ties, and that's easy to do. You just renounce them and cut them. It's not a big deal so that you can be released. Most of the time, the hindrance for people not receiving tongues is just that they didn't understand that you just simply have to move out in faith for it. It's so simple. I'll tell you, the more you pray in tongues, the more experiences in God you're going to have because your most holy faith is going to be built up. And I challenge you, all of you here today, that if you will take an hour a day to pray in tongues, supernatural things will begin to happen in your life. Your prayer life will become more vibrant. Your witnessing will become more powerful. You'll go out with more boldness, more confidence than you ever had. You'll have faith to perform miracles and healings as God leads you to pray for people. Things are going to start to happen. Divine appointments will start to happen in your life where you will be able to witness of the grace of God that is within you. And he's here today, and he's saying, the banquet table has been set. And if you want to receive, you can receive. If you want to walk in it, you can walk in it. It's for you. Amen? Okay, so those of you that want to speak in tongues today, you either have never done it or you want a further release, come up front here quickly. <clears throat> and then we'll practice on the way to the food hall. Oh, and I'm going to have my friends come forward and any ministry team that's around that wants to. Hana Mashika, whoa! Oh, there's power up here. Oh, there's power up here. Hana Mashoko, whoa, the Holy Ghost is here. Woo! Okay, crowd in, let's crowd in here. Let's just get into a cluster. Hanamashika. Woo! Okay. Okay. Is there anyone here that does not know Jesus Christ yet as your own personal Savior and Lord? Anyone here yet that does not know that? Okay. You're all believers then. Okay, pray after me in this way. Lord Jesus, I confess louder that you are my Savior. And that, and that you are my Lord. And I ask you, I ask you to, take to take your place of rule within my spirit. Within my spirit. And, I and I renounce any association with darkness. Association with darkness. And, I and I renounce any false doctrines. Any false doctrines. I cast them down. I cast down wrong mindsets, I down wrong mindsets. And, I and I choose to believe by faith, believe by faith. That, you that you are going to fill me to overflowing with the power of your Holy Spirit, of your Holy Spirit. that I will be completely immersed, will be completely immersed. in the Holy Spirit's presence. And so I receive that by faith now. And I believe now that that has happened. 
And I thank you for that. And I believe that I have the gift of tongues. And I thank you for this gift. It is what you have given to me. And I cherish it. And today, I choose to release it in your hearing, Lord. It's for you. It's unto you today as an expression of my thanksgiving and faith. Thank you, Lord, that I have tongues. And now I will speak in them. So are you ready to do that? I'm going to say one, two, three, and we'll all do it together. Take a deep breath, and you just let her rip. Just let her rip. Let her rip loud. Even if it's just one little, ooh, getting out. Just let it out. One little drop. Ooh, let it out. Just make that sound by faith. One, two, three. Halarabashatamashakalarabasabarandag. Hanemashikalarabashatamashakalarabasabarandag.